there, Lindsay here, the Frugal Crafter. Today we're going to do a very quick project. We're going to paint some uh, Chinese lanterns here. And um, of course, when I'm looking for a subject, um, I knew I wanted to paint Chinese lanterns. I went to um, paint my photo and there were a few illustrations I liked. And this is by, this is by Nicola B. Um, this, uh, the, uh, the uh, photograph that I'm going from, I am kind of plumping them up a little bit because they seemed a little less plumpy in the photo. So I'm just kind of sketching on this heart, these heart shaped um, little guys here. Just kind of putting on some basic shapes. Now I'm not going to be doing a lot of erasing. I'm just sketching in very, very quickly here. I've actually got a. Um, an adult watercolor class tonight and I've been hemming and hawing about what I am going to teach for this class and I'm like you know what my sister had wanted a painting of Chinese lanterns and I figured that's those great great colors this time of year this is a leaf up here by the way in case it wasn't <laughs> obvious why they fantastic job on doing drawing um, she wanted a um, a picture of Chinese lanterns, so I thought this would be a great opportunity. And I'm going to put a few more leaves, and actually are there because um, sometimes you have to do that as an artist. You have to add a few little extra things to make it balance. And maybe I'll put a few extra over here that aren't in the photograph. Um, so you know, as long as you get the basic shape of them right, you're going to be all right. And I, I am a very uh, loose sketcher, and that's kind of what I wanted to go from go for here. All right, now, something else I want to do, you can erase some of these extra lines later. Um, I wanted to use masking tape, that is packing tape. Where's my masking tape? Right here. And kind of mask off a little frame so that even though I'm working on a block, you could also just, you know, cut your paper to size and tape down the table. I thought I might do something cool with a border at a later date, but right for today, for today I'm just gonna do this. Um, I actually kind of want to go over that a little bit. I mean, I line this up, if I line the block up on my paper, it might be even easier to get a nice straight line. Or maybe I better eyeball it because I don't trust my, uh, I don't trust my, my grid because like, I'm kind of not looking at it at a, at a perfect angle and kind of at a little bit of a parallax because of the way I'm standing. So I'm just going to eyeball it here. So if I sound, um, if I sound a little a little crazier than usual, I've been on the phone all day um, talking with some very inspiring, fantastic people, and uh, we'll have more to discuss on that at a later time. But I realized, oh my gosh, I got to get some work done. <laughs> you know, days like that. I'm actually feeling quite quite giddy because we should have our other kitty cat today. We we're supposed to get him yesterday, but he hadn't had his shot yet. So uh, today should be the day, and it actually works out better because we were going to have to turn around and leave him at home um, because my son had his court of honor for Boy Scouts. So luckily we didn't have to do that. Now that is kind of smudgy. So what I'm going to do is grab it. Oh my gosh, uh, you can't see this is off camera. I'm actually struggling with an eraser. It was somehow stuck in the bottom of my supply, supply tray. And I'm just going to erase a few things. And I know the water pump's gonna start any moment because I have like the dishwasher going. I'm like multitasking to the extreme today. Um, I'm just gonna grab a clean dry brush and brush off the crumbs. All right, and while I'm at it, you know what I'm gonna do? Press down my tape here and add some water. Now I'm not gonna show you my water buckets because honestly, I really should have run upstairs and got fresh water. <laughs> this is the freshest of the water I have currently down here, but I think it'll be fine. All right, I'm gonna go for some ultramarine blue. Probably the blue I use most often. And about, about time to ref, uh, refresh that. And I'm putting it around the edges. And the reason I wanna use that is because it'll be, I uh, really make the uh, flowers pop there. I want some um, yellow ochre, I think. I'm gonna put that right in the center just to warm things up. And I am gonna take a little of, I'm gonna use cad orange for the um, for the flowers, but I wanna show you something kinda of cool. If take a little cadmium orange, which is any sort of warm orange, well, it's a warm, you can use any warm orange. Um, I'm using cadmium orange medium. And I'm gonna add some ultramarine blue to it. And you're probably thinking, well, you're gonna have this crazy wild blue, purple there, Lindsay. But actually what you get is almost a gray because um, I'm using a, um, I'm using such an orange, 
uh, red that it it's almost like an opposite of the purple and I'm just gonna add some of that in I'm gonna drizzle it in here around the bottom add a little visual weight I don't want it right on top of the flowers but I'm just gonna kind of put it in there to add some interest and then I want to grab a little sap green good thing oh you know it was funny you might want to try this it was totally funny um I I had a friend of mine told me she watches all videos except for mine on like double speed and you can do that if you click the little gear underneath the video it'd be like under there right around there I think there's a little gear and you click that and you can change how fast or slow something is and so I put mine on like two speed and I sounded like a deranged chipmunk it was pretty crazy. I'm just dribbling a little of that sap green in there. Now I'm gonna grab a paper towel. Can you believe I have my paper towels handy today? It's totally freak coincidence because I I uh, must have left them there from something else because I didn't fetch them beforehand. And look, I can lift up most of the color on these Chinese lanterns. Um, so I'm gonna do that. And I'm getting a little bit of puddling because I have super, super saturated paper. But instead of blotting that with a paper towel where it's puddling, what I'm gonna do is um, dry off my brush here and I'm gonna set the brush in the puddles and that will soak up a lot of that without without uh, completely lifting it off. In fact, I can go in and replace a little bit of that color while it's still so wet. You wanna do this, um, anytime you're you're doing this, you wanna make sure you, if you're touching up the background, you wanna do it before it starts to dry because once it starts to dry, you're gonna get blooms, which are very interesting. Sometimes it will work out in your favor and other times it's a big old mess so if you are going to do any touching up of the background do it when it's really wet and you know try to get your puddles right away or the puddles turn into blooms too so if you want to avoid the blooms that is what you ought to do okay there we go so here we have our little background let's just hit that with a heat gun for a minute actually i'll pause it we'll come right back it'll be dry Okay, it's pretty well dry. I want to show you, I did have a bloom right there. That's what I was talking about. See that kind of ruffled edge? Um, so there was a puddle there, and when it dried, it kind of gave you that little ruffled edge. Um, so that's a bloom, and I decided to leave that right there so I could show you what it looked like. Yeah, I planned it. See? Huh? It didn't. It wasn't a mistake that I forgot to blot up. No, it was on purpose. A plan. I want to show you this. This is kind of cool. I have no idea how these work. I mean, I know how a brush works, obviously, derf. But, whoop, well, I broke it. Uh-oh. Okay, I'm... I, don't use your teeth. I use my teeth to pull that out. I'm going to put another string in there or something. But anyway, I don't know where these came from, but I found them in my stash and they're like little brushes that fit inside each other. So I thought I'd try those. They might be no good. I don't even know where they came from, to tell you the truth. But uh, I'm going to use some cad. Yeah, yeah, I don't think these are going to be any good. But um, I'm going to use some cad yellow and I'm going to go ahead and add it right on its own. I'm not wetting the paper first. I'm just painting it with the cadmium yellow this first focal point one. There we go. And then I'm going to just swish my brush off and grab some of that cat orange. I'm sorry, cat, uh, derf. Derf, oh my gosh, day, word of the day. Cad red, and I'm just gonna kinda add it in there and let it bleed around. And I'm gonna be switching this brush in a minute because this really isn't, I don't know what I'm gonna do with these. These aren't that great. <laughs> All right, so I'm gonna leave that there and grab another brush. It's neat how they fit in. It's neat how space saving they are, but they're not the best. They don't come to a very good point. I'm sure I'll use them for something. Let's see. Oh, we'll use this. Um, all right. And I'm just going to kind of help it around a little bit. Now you can see, I don't know if you're noticing this, but um, the cadmium colors are very opaque and you can kind of see how much they cover up the pencil lines. A little quality, because it's a, it's a mineral color and um, it tends to they tend to have larger particles. They tend to be easy to lift because they sit on top of the paper instead of soaking it and staining it. And then um, I think I want to shape this a little bit. It's just a little too bland. Use the tip of my brush to bring it down to a point. There we go. I'm going to give it a highlight with my paper towel. But first, I'm going to grab a credit card scraper because it's my favorite tool. And I'm going to scrape in some of the lines. Sorry if I'm sounding all like uh, completely crazed. I'm feeling very crazed today. It was uh, a slow, I don't know why I had a slow start. I guess I had a lot of things to do today that um, were a lot of kind of puttery things. And then I'd be like, well, I really should be using my time better. And then I'd go work on this other thing. And then 
I don't know. And there, I've got my little highlight there, which went to almost white, but we're going to let that dry and it'll lighten up a little bit everywhere else. And we're going to do the same thing on the other, the other flowers. What do you call them? Do you call them flowers? Do you call them fruits? I'm not exactly sure. I'm just going to go ahead and add a bunch of that light, that cad red, that cad yellow. Um, having a dyslexia, don't know my colors day. Not to be confused with the <laughs> dyslexia and not knowing my right from left from the other day. Oh, it is such a uh, such a fun journey in my brain sometimes. I don't really have a dyslexia. I don't want to. Uh, I don't think I do anyway. I just don't know my right from left on like you know when I have to guess quickly or someone gives me directions when I'm driving, which people usually don't make the mistake of riding with me twice. Actually, I'm a very safe driver. I haven't been in an accident since I was, a, you know, in my early 20s. And none of those are serious. Just a driver and experience type deals. Okay, I'm just... Oh, I kind of like this. Look at that. I'm kind of painterly. I feel like Matisse. You know who I like? I like uh, Moreau. He was such an upbeat painter. You think of artists and you think of them being all dour and uh, gloomy. Not Moreau. He was very upbeat. He said his wife would go to the store, go to the market. He didn't like to. He didn't like to work on a on a fresh white canvas or a fresh white piece of paper. And his wife would come home from the market with you know the meat wrapped up in butcher paper, and he would steal the butcher paper from her, and he would start painting on it because he loved that mess. It already had a mess on it. He didn't have to you know worry. Anything he did to it was going to improve it. And that's kind of like I was talking about the art journal page the other day when I was talking about, I love it when I get to this point where I've totally wrecked it because then everything I do is going to be an improvement. And so it's kind of that same, that same philosophy. It's M-I-R-O. If you ever want to look at, look him up. Um, he was quite pro prolific, did a lot of, uh, it was more abstract, but uh, he was a contemporary of Picasso. Um, he was, he's just, he's cheerful. He is sunny and wonderful. All right, um, I'm going to add a little water here and kind of help that flow because sedimentary colors don't flow quite as well as our dye-based counterparts. We'll just get in there and give it a little swishy swish with our brushy brush. But they are very liftable, so, you know, that's, um, that's how you kind of learn about your different colors. I'm just blotting off little highlights. I'm not going to fuss with it at all. All right, now we're going to do the stems. I'm not even going to worry about that drying. We'll grab, we've already used some yellow ochre, so I'm just going to grab some yellow ochre. And I'm going to grab a little sap green in there. And I'm going to go ahead and paint in some stems. And, you know, I might even go in to some of them. Go right, right over the, um, what are we going to call them? Fruits or flowers, folks? You'll have to let me know in the comments. Are they a fruit? Are they a flower? Is it a plane? Is it a Superman? I don't know. Hope my furnace isn't too loud. Good lordy, I was so cold this morning. My feet were cold, my nose was cold. I had to go up and make a cup of tea and heat up a rice bag because I was just like, I am cold. I'm gonna ask Santa Claus for a heater. Well, I have a heater in my studio down here. Just <laughs> need some insulation or something. Holy moly. It's only, it's, it's you know, middle of November and I'm already cold. Come January, I'm gonna be freezing. Maybe I'm just getting old. It's hit me harder this year. <laughs> so cold. Once I get working, it's usually when I'm procrastinating that I'm feeling chilly because once I get working, it's like I don't even notice that I'm cold. It's like when I'm just kind of like, oh, well, pushing paper around and, you know, playing with Mod Podge and string and not really, like, committing to anything, then I'm kind of, I don't know. Once I'm, once I'm knee deep into a craft, I am. I'm, I'm good to go. It's that, it's that like hemming and hawing, which I tend to do way too much. This week has been the hemming and hawing week. I think it's just I have so many projects halfway done that, and it's like, well, what do I start? Well, I, I don't have time to finish this, so I better not start that. And it's just, you know, you get in the what? You, there should be a word for that. It's craft uh, delayitis or something. I don't know. I know that there needs to be something going on here. What are we going to do? We're going to do... Let's do that. We'll see. There's an invisible one somewhere. we gotta, we got to do some something. All right. I'm going to grab my credit card scraper and add some veins in here. Actually, I have a little bit extra time today, which is needed because I 
and prepare for my class and I just couldn't I want to do something I was excited about that's the thing with me is I can't just teach the same thing over and over again if I'm not feeling it if I'm not excited about it then there's no point in me teaching it because I'm not going to inspire anybody with it so I was like, what am I going to do and then the, I remembered my sister wanted Chinese lanterns and I'm like that's it that's what I'll do all right so what do we got here let me just kind of look at this not too bad all right I'm gonna do some wet into wet here I'm gonna go back with that round and I need some shadow but I don't want I want it to match so what I'm gonna do is take that ultramarine blue and that cad red if I put a list a little bit of ultramarine blue that's the gray I get you can see right there I can also add green to the red and get a different brown okay because green and red are opposites and that red is orangey enough that the blue can kind of be an opposite so I'm not going to get a true gray with either of them but I am going to get some nice dark shadows and I'm going to use that to add some details in here it's almost going to be like a, um, a Chinese um, calligraphy painting because I am just approaching it with such an economy of brush strokes because there's a there's I'm teaching a beginner watercolor class and it's an hour and a half long but I find that something that takes me 10 minutes is about perfect for an hour and a half long class because I think it's hard to be decisive when you're a beginner and you can spend so much time just just fussing around with paint so at least this way if it's a quick project you have a time to fuss with it and you even have time to redo it if you need to I'm really liking the way this brownish color that I made with the red and green looks in the um, in the leaves and I'm going to add some of that into these little flowers here. Now this brush I'm using is in a uh, Royal brush by the Royal Company, the same company that makes the Aqualon. This was a super cheap brush. I picked up at a stamp show. I think I paid $10 for a set of, I don't know, seven or eight. And then somebody else told me they paid five for the same brush set at Michael's. So it's a super inexpensive set. Um, they're not quite as nice as the Aqualons, but, um, but you know, they're, they're, they're working fine for this. They don't have the, quite the snap that the Aqualons have, um, but they're definitely a, um, viable choice if you're looking for a, you know, a starter brush or a brush for, you know, having your travel bag or whatever, something to play with. All right, and I lost my highlight on that one, so I'm just going to lift that up a little bit. And this might be a little too wild and wooly for you, but sometimes you got to have a wild, got to let out your inner wild child. All right, I am just going to blot off a little bit of a highlight there. Yeah, this this colors lift so easily because they're sedimentary, they're a mineral based color. Um, some of your your more stainy colors are dye or plant based, and they uh, they can be more fugitive too. They the mineral based colors are much less likely to fade on you. It's like the brighter the color, the more likely it is to fade. And uh, you know what? I think I'm kind of liking that. All right, so I think I'm gonna leave this way. It is. It's a very quick and easy demonstration. It took us 18 minutes to do, uh, which will be um, good for the class I'm gonna do. I'm gonna take off my tape here, and I need your opinion because I'm thinking. I sometimes like to do things in the borders, like when I've taped something off like this. So what do you think? Should I do some stamping in the border? Should I do some writing, journaling in the border? What should I do with the border of this? I, of course, will go in and erase any pencil lines after it's completely dry. But I'd love to know what you think. Leave a comment and let me know. And if you enjoyed this tutorial, please give me a thumbs up and share it with your friends. Um, if you're not a subscriber, uh, hit that red subscribe button. And I have daily crafty videos that you can enjoy. And I certainly hope you do. I hope this was a fun, loose, freeing painting project for you that has inspired you to try your own and uh, I just want to thank you so much for watching and spending some of your day with me today and as always happy crafting